Muslims have a hard time understanding how a loving, merciful God, it seems like a contradiction, would crucify his beloved son. They, it, it, it goes against, it's a contradiction to them. Why, can you answer this question, why would God, who's so big and so forgiving and loving, not just forgive us all our sins and have to kill the person he loved most in order to forgive us? I think the answer to that is very simple, and that, it, that is that we have a, such a high view of what relationship with God is, and we have such a high view of what sin does to that relationship, that it requires, and these are God's parameters, these aren't my parameters, they're not your parameters, Preggy, it's God's parameters, it, it requires a death, it requires a sacrifice, it requires a, a blood that has to be shed. That sounds It kind seems of horrendous to me that God would do that, and the fact that God would do that is, is all the more appalling to me that he'd do it for you, and he'd do it for me. The fact that he would take on that punishment on himself. It is not something that he imposed on himself. It is something that he chose for himself to do. He chose willingly to do that. To me, it's not horrendous. I'm appalled that God would do that for me. Because otherwise I'm lost, and so is everybody else sitting in this audience here. We're all lost because it, it does take a blood sacrifice for the wages of sin is death. Any little sin is death, according to Romans 6.23. That means we're all dead. It's because the sin is that? so horrendous. Who wrote Romans? Paul wrote Paul Romans, wrote thank Romans. you. And that's where and we're all gonna this keep idea is coming from. Let me see, finish though, Shabir. It's because, no, Shabir, yeah. before you get onto your tirade on this again, <laughs> let me finish. It's very important you see this. It's because of that sin that separated us from a God that God took it upon himself to rectify it himself. Otherwise, we're all dead. Otherwise, we're all dead. And I thank God for that. Mm -hmm. You see, Peggy, actually this idea was originated by Paul. I mean, he said the wages of sin is death. He made the, the cross the center of his theology. Mm -hmm. And that's why he put so much on it. That's why he said if Christ is not raised, then uh, you're still in your sins. To him, God had to come and die for your sins. But it makes no sense because if God wants, he can forgive us. Just like Jesus taught about the parable of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15. The son comes back to his father. The father welcomes him with open arms and has a celebration. Nobody has to die for somebody to be forgiven. Because if somebody dies then there is no forgiveness you know that means we, I just took my full price I'm a cruel judge I just exact the full punishment somebody goes and dies and then I'm happy but if God was loving and kind he should be loving and kind to his son as well and save his son by some other means and uh, Jay said the son was willing but notice that's the representation in the last of the four Gospels but Matthew Mark and Luke showed that the son was although willing he was submitting but not offering himself. In the Gospel according to John the story is revised so that Jesus actually offers himself because that just looks better. But even if the son offers himself it doesn't really solve the problem because if the son loves the people so much that he wants to die for them doesn't the father love the people more than the son loves? Or equal to? Why doesn't the father come himself? You know I don't shove my son in the, in the path of a moving car to go and save somebody. I go myself and I protect my son. So the whole thing makes no sense. Shabir, let, let me... May I just say something on that? Yes. I think it's very simple why he didn't, why he didn't come himself. He did come himself, and that's one of the mysteries of the Trinity. But you have to ask us, why does it that Jesus Christ had to come? The reason why is because you say somebody cannot take on someone else's sin. It depends on who sinned against. See, any time I sin, every time I sin, even if I take that pen from you or that watch from you, and I give it back to you, and I ask forgiveness for you, has that not impinged upon God? Yes, every sin impinges upon God. Even eating of a simple fruit infringes upon God. Therefore, he who was sinned against, it is he who took on that sin against, who took on the punishment of that sin. There is the enormity of what we see in the cross. There is the enormity of what we have seen by Jesus Christ coming down as the Godhead, taking on this sin, though he was the one who was sinned against. Now that Doesn't Islam does sense, not answer. Because what you're saying is that if you sin against me, I cannot forgive you until I punish myself. It doesn't make any sense. If I want to forgive you, I just simply forgive you. What you're failing to understand is that every sin that we do not only has a horizontal consequence, it also has a vertical consequence. Not, Muslims don't understand that because say, they don't understand the relationship that is there between God and no. man. When you say God came down himself and died, then he died on the cross. So that means God died. He it's just did. getting worse every time you go. He certainly did. Um, I don't have a problem with that. Okay. If you, if you said the son died, then at least you have the father to, to look after the world. But, but we if, have no problem. It was God that died on the cross. Why do you have a problem with that? Because if God died, that's blasphemy. Then who would run the world? Who would run the world? <laughs> Welcome back, friends. I hope you enjoyed the video till the last minute. What a beautiful debate between a Muslim uh, representative and about the Christian. You know, every time... Uh, if we watch this kind of video, especially between a Christian and a Muslim, 
and what they are talking about in a very polite way now this is what we call a special debate Almighty Allah clearly mentioned in the Holy Quran that Udu ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal mawizati al hasana so that is called hikmah whenever you use a very polite word just like that the Shabir Ali how he used a very polite in words and how he best described the way how he best described the answer and how the interviewer asked question and how he represented so it's uh, we can say that subhanallah now this Christian he believed the, the question was that how God crucify a loving son so then he said that just for all sin all of our sin because we Muslim we can make sin we make sin in every minute every hour every day we make sin so uh, Almighty Allah crucify his loving son just for the sin of all of the humanity now if you look at this logically this is incorrect because how we can say it's a justice that we perform sin and someone else do the uh, punishment get the punishment that perform we sin and get the punishment by someone else so logically it is incorrect and like Shabir Ali how he give a replied answer that if God is die like for example the Christian consider that Jesus is the son of God so if uh, the son of God if he has been die if he has been crucified so who is running the world now currently the world is running the sun is setting in his time every planet uh, has been rounding with his uh, motion with his special uh, special motion and with his own time there is nothing happening between the universe so it means that God is still alive and God is none but only Almighty Allah now if the Christian believe that Jesus is crucified for the sin of the humanity so Shabir Ali he reply in a very good way that if Almighty Allah wants he can forgive his own son and also he will be fine another way except killing his son he will find also another way to forgiving all our son so logically this answer is correct that Almighty Allah if Almighty Allah wants then he will forgive the son of everyone sin of everyone because Almighty Allah clearly mentioned in the Holy Quran in Allah la yaghfiru ayyushraka bihi wa yaghfiru maduna zalika liman yasha that Almighty Allah will forgive each and every sin but he will not forgive the sin of shirk so my dear brother and sister if Christianity or if Christian believe that Jesus is crucified for the sin of humanity so it is logically it is incorrect because it is injustice that if uh, sin for palm someone else and punishment will be get someone else so this is illogically we can say logically it is incorrect and the way Shabir Ali answered him in a very polite way and a very we can say point to point answer this is very beautiful and very precise answer and most of the audience appreciate it you can listen the sound of clapping that how audience appreciate the answer of Shabir Ali so my dear brother and sister the moral of the video is Jesus is neither crucified neither he is killed and Almighty Allah clearly mentioned in the Holy Quran وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَا لَهُمْ and furthermore this Christian he said that if Jesus what will not crucify if Jesus was not crucified then all the human will be dead so how it is possible Almighty Allah says that human being will be created till the doomsday on the doomsday each and every human will be killed each and human will be die so logically these Christian whenever he say answers from every kind it was completely we can say a wrong way in a wrong way he give answer he does not give answer correctly and the way Shabir Ali answer it's very amazing and fabulous I hope you enjoy the video if you like the video subscribe the channel and share it with your friends